we go. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to my kitchen. It is time for lunch. <laughs> I am super hungry and I'm ready to eat as usual. Uh, no different than every Wednesday where I just am absolutely ravenous and can't wait to eat. <laughs> All right, so um, for today I have, uh, let me see, what is this? I think this is pretty new. Um, no, it's not. It's still on the new shelf. This is not new. Um, which just means that it's been going out a lot. So this is, this is from about a year ago, so it's new-ish. This is Jubilee uh, Recipes from Two Centuries of African American Cooking by Tony Tipton Martin. And I saw a recipe for crawfish bisque, which certainly looks amazing, and decided that as the weather is getting cooler, especially at night, it certainly gets super chilly, that this was what I wanted to make. Um, a couple of notes about this recipe for today, because as usual, we're working with what we got. Um, I knew I wasn't going to find crawfish um, at any of my local haunts, but instead I, um, I thought I was going to use langoustine tails because Trader Joe's usually has them and they similarly have, similarly to crawfish, have their own very intense concentrated flavor. Trader Joe's doesn't have them anymore. So we're going with shrimp, going with shrimp bisque. What can I say, folks? Um, the recipe also calls for um, what they call the the uh, holy trinity of foods, which is onion, celery, green bell pepper. Um, I decided not to use celery, which I know I am committing some kind of sacrilege right now in the food world, because um, I don't really eat celery, so every time I buy celery for a recipe, it kind of goes to waste, and it doesn't like heat and thaw well, like that. Eh. So, um, eh. All right, so we're working with what we got today. It's still gonna be really good. I'm still very excited to try it. The recipe is available on our website um, underneath the um, weekly, where are my words today? I'm really hungry. I'm not hangry though, but I'm hungry. Um, underneath our weekly adult programs, which is towards the bottom of the page, you'll see uh, this recipe. And I will be putting up later today, next week's recipe. We'll talk about all that in a little bit because we will have some time to chit chat while this is simmering because it does need to uh, simmer a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So this starts with a roux like we made with our macaroni and cheese a couple weeks ago. So it's butter and flour. Today I am not using flour. I'm going to treat myself correctly and use a gluten-free flour blend. I did a little research this morning and um, my beeswax wrap, by the way, don't use plastic wrap, don't use plastic bags, use a reusable and eventually compostable beeswax wrap. That's my... It's my environmental plug for the day. There's always one. Um, but yeah, I did a little research and apparently if you have like a good gluten-free flour blend, you can do one-to-one -one with flour, which is exactly um, what I'm going to do today. So we're going to um, heat up the butter and flour over a medium heat for about five minutes to make a light blonde roux. Then we're gonna add in onion and some bell pepper. I have some diced peppers here already. They're frozen, so this is gonna be fun. You gotta do that thing where you like break it up in the bag. Anyway, it's gonna be a good time. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get started. So we'll do that, we'll get, get ready for this. So I'm gonna put my butter in, I'm gonna turn on my heat, and then I'll measure out my two tablespoons of Flour. If you're actually doing regular flour, you're going to use all-purpose flour. Um, unsalted butter, by the way. Salt it yourself. We never, 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 never use, well, not never, never, but for the most part, don't use salted butter. Um, first of all, in baked goods, because then it just doesn't come out right. Um, it's always going to taste weird. Uh, the one time, I know she's totally watching, the one time uh, my mom made Christmas cookies. My dad loves chocolate chip cookies, loves chocolate chip cookies, so she makes them for Christmas. And the one year, they, they were so salty, and I was like, well, what did you do? And the recipe called for salt, but the butter had salt, so they, they were a little salty. Um, it's okay. 
fixed it. It's fine. Um, my dad was like really looking forward to those cookies. Not this batch, the next batch. <laughs> um, it's just easier to control the salt level, both in terms of flavor and health wise, when you do the flour yourself. All right, so my butter's gonna start to melt and I'm gonna get two tablespoons of flour. want to watch because you don't want uh, it to burn. There are like different, apparently different like levels of roux, I guess, depending on how long you let it cook. This one is calling for a blonde roux, so it doesn't need to cook for that long before we start um, adding in our ingredients because we don't want it to get too dark, I guess. I don't know what the difference is, but I did start reading today that there are different kinds of Brew and they all have uh, like a certain use and flavor and whatnot. So but we are using a gluten-free flour, so it is a little different. First of all, we don't need to worry about cooking the flour so much. Um, I don't know how it's gonna react to the heat the same way. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just gonna start mixing it up. I feel like I should move the camera closer today because we're really just going to be working in this pot. But as usual, there's like a bit of a precarious uh, situation with the tripod and whatnot. Um, especially because I got a, a new phone case and it's like very heavy. Uh, comparatively, I used to just take the case off, but now it's pain in, pain in my behind. So, all right. This is actually... Pretty nice. All right, should I try? Oh, no. Anyway. Um, so what does it say? Cook, stirring consistently about five minutes. I'm gonna lower my heat. My flame is pretty strong on my stove. Um, But also, I mean, the gluten-free flours have different thickening agents rather than, you know, the gluten and the thickener that's naturally in flour. So it is going to thicken a little differently. So I'm actually probably not going to cook this for five minutes because it already looks kind of thick and nice. I love the smell of cooking butter. I just, when the butter starts to melt down, what a, what a great smell. smell but I don't want it to burn or brown we're not then that's the other thing is that brown butter is a different flavor pro profile a lot of the time so I mean it is I mean have you ever had brown butter cookies amazing so I don't want too much of the um, liquid to cook out so we're gonna get started right away here with the um, add in some onion and bell pepper and then cook until they are starting to soften. So I've already chopped up my onion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in my pot. And let that start to cook. There you go, friends. There you go, come on, get in the party. Get in the pool, join the party. And I'm gonna get some of these peppers. Sorry that I'm not using celery, but I just, I know. I know. Come on. Come on. It's still too frozen. Burger. There we go. Got it. But I used my muscles. Fantastic. So I'm going to stir this just to even all these pieces out so that not one piece. This is the fun here with the butter. Very good. All right. So I'm gonna let this all cook. You gotta soften up, so it's gotta it's gotta cook a little. Um, it says about two minutes. I'm gonna prob probably go three because my diced peppers are a little frozen. Um, 
Then we're gonna add in garlic, which I've already minced up. It's um, like one clove of, or one teaspoon of minced garlic. So I just used a small clove. snack on a little bit of shrimp. Um, so this recipe does call for cooked um, crawfish or in our case shrimp. Um, that way it doesn't need to cook uh, in the pot. Oh, that's the other thing. Also, because this recipe calls for fish stock, which the author does give the recipe for on the next page. I am not making homemade fish stock. Um, I will remedy that. I am using chicken bone broth, and I'm gonna remedy the flavor a little bit just by adding like a quarter of a teaspoon of fish sauce, um, just for that flavor. And so I believe that the fish stock recipe is like, here's where you can cook your crawfish tails. Um, Oh no, just kidding, I lied. Use the shells from shrimp. Okay, just kidding, I lied to you, totally lied to you. But anyway, yeah, so it's already cooked. Mine was frozen, so I defrosted it in the sink. Um, all right, you're starting to soften up a little bit and my, my roux is, is pretty thick here, so. So, what am I gonna do? My garlic, right? Add in my garlic, then we're gonna add in the seasonings and the bone broth. Remember to watch your garlic, it burns pretty quickly. move my cutting board and then I can move the camera a little closer so maybe you can kind of see what's happening. Alright, All right, let's see if we can see what's happening a little better. Ooh. Okay. I'm still very precarious here. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep stirring. Again, I don't want my garlic to burn, but I do want it to start to soften and release its flavors before it gets lost in the shuffle. And it does smell good in here already. The butter and the onions. Oh, great smell. I know I always talk about how good the cooking butter smells. I don't, I promise you, I don't sit around and like eat butter for fun. I promise you. Um, so you can see it's nice and thick up in here. It's really, really good smelling. So All right, again, I'm just going to spread this out, make sure everybody's getting contact with the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to start to measure out my seasoning. So we need paprika, salt, and cayenne. I actually finally got regular paprika and plain old cayenne. I know the past couple of weeks I've been like, eh, but... I got it this time. Um, salt, it says about one teaspoon or to taste, so you know me. Here we go, I'm just gonna grind it all in and I'll add more if I need it later. It's always easier to add more salt, you can't take it away. Remember that, okay. So some cayenne pepper, I gotta open this up. Oh, as usual, let's see, you should have opened everything before we started. So we're doing uh, a teaspoon of my cayenne. And just put that right on in. And a tablespoon of paprika. Are you ready for that? Okay. Here we go. Did I open this one yet? No. I'm gonna open it. Oops, little things. Okay. Ah, look at that. Easy peasy. Good job. All right. Add a tablespoon of paprika. Mm. 
honestly, before I was looking at this picture and I was like, where does all of that beautiful rich color from come from? It comes from the cooking of the roux and all of this paprika and cayenne. We're gonna center this in, mix it up really well, and then we're gonna add in our liquid. Um, you may find that you are like me and your flour, butter, veggie, situation is starting to stick to the bottom of the pan when you add in that liquid you'll be able to scrape all that up and uh, get it back in there okay all right so let me get the cap back on these guys go safely okay um add in your stock then we're going to add some thyme and a bay leaf and easy so now this needs to come up to temperature um, and it's going to thicken so while that is happening we can actually talk about this uh, cookbook a little bit all right this happened right last week where I was like I need to I need to open these things ahead of time let me get the scissors did just get another piece of shrimp. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I fully admit that. Okay. So it says simmer for about 20 minutes. I'm probably not going to give it the full 20 minutes while you're all on here with me because that's a long time for me to just stand here and chat with you. No offense, I like you guys, but it's a long time for me to just sit and not do anything. But I'm going to show you some of the recipes in the cookbook. Um, I usually, you know, when this happens, usually I try to come up with like a quick side dish. Um, a lot of these are not quick. They are, they are flavorful and they're definitely worth the time um, that you're going to spend in here. Oh yeah, I'm also going to add my dash of fish sauce just to account for the flavor here. Um, see, making substitutes, it totally works. You can do it. Um, so we'll, we'll get there. I know some people are probably like, oh my god, fish sauce, that's disgusting. It actually, I mean, you know, I've used it in a couple of recipes here with everybody. Um, it really is sometimes that flavor that you're missing from something like a curry or a fish dish or a stir fry. Um, don't like to think about what it is. I'm not going to talk about it, but it is delicious. All right, so I'm just putting my lids back on here. I have to get my thyme. How much thyme? About a quarter of a teaspoon. I'm just gonna eyeball that. And one bay leaf. Which I also have to open up because I never use bay leaves, but I saw this recipe and decided to try it. I've never used bay leaves before, so I'm just like, what is, what does it smell like? What does it add to the party? I don't know, but you dunk it in there and then you take it out when you're done. You don't eat it. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this in. I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit so we can come to a simmer and start to uh, get the magic going. I mean, it looks good. You can kind of see it a little bit, right? So, um, bring, oh, bring to boil, then reduce. So let's, let's get you to boil now. All right. Um, so 
the other thing in this cookbook that I was like, oh, I can do that's really quick. And then I was like, ah, yes, this is midday work day. I'm not going to. There are some really delightful looking drink recipes in here. Um, right, like now that's what we're doing. Now we're going to go through the book and talk about some of the most amazing things. Well, anyway, this book is... Um, really wonderful because it does talk about, um, the author does talk about the history of these recipes and where they come from. Uh, the story is a little interesting right in the beginning here. Um, uh, as she was doing her research, I was surrounded by books that span nearly 200 years of black cooking. Um, it's just, you know, everything from I mean, just, just so many, you know, professional cooks, um, home cooks. It's just amazing. Uh, just talking about the history. Um, dating back to 1827. That's just amazing. Um, themes that reflect not just Southern cooking or soul food African Americans are known for, but broad culinary interests and recipes. And so that's where a lot of these come from, a lot of these recipes. And also just she talks a little bit about like her history with food. And so if you are one of those people who really likes cookbooks with context, you're probably really going to like this one. Um, and then they're, they're split up. There are some appetizers and then there's a whole little blurb about where these recipes come from and some different things. And then there's, they're split up. So appetizers is also split up into like chips and spreads. And then they're like small plates. Um, these orange glazed chicken wings sound amazing, but it definitely takes a long time uh, to cook them. But I mean, like, look at this recipe. Wow, that looks amazing. Um, let's see if I can bring you down over here to, uh, oh, see, my phone case is too heavy now. All right, let's see if I can flip this. Hello, everybody. Let's see if I can flip this around so you can look at the cookbook. It's gonna be, see now it's gonna be backwards here. This is just, just so much work right now. But anyway, you can look at the pictures, it's fine. Don't look at the words. <laughs> um, these are sweet potato biscuits with ham, curried meat pies, curried, there's, and then there's the pastry crust, salmon croquettes. Um, deviled crab. This sounds intriguing, but I don't know if I'd ever be able to make that like that with the crab. Uh, okay. Um, and then there's this section, liquefied soul for beverages. Um, ginger punch, which is like a homemade, um, ginger beer, which sounds amazing. There's also persimmon beer and elderberry wine, citrus honey tea punch, which sounds amazing. And I was actually going to make that as my little side thing today, but I don't have any mint tea. I have lots of other tea, but I don't have any mint tea. Um, hibiscus tea, which sounds amazing. Uh, coffee. By the way, we're starting to come up to a boil. We're getting there. Calypso coffee, which, um, Includes rum, so again, things I'm not going to make while I'm working. Fruit punch for grown-ups, a champagne cocktail, rum punch. Quick eggnog, um, which has bourbon, rum, and brandy in it. Um, and then this, which sounds great, an apple hot toddy. You know, it's getting chilly out, everybody. Um, mint juleps. There are a lot of uh, bread recipes in here that looked really good. Biscuits, buttermilk biscuits, right? You can't go wrong. Orange biscuits. Uh, gingerbread waffles and cream. I'm going to give this a stir over here. Let's give this a little stir. So I'm going to reduce the heat on this now and just let it simmer away. the heat down just a little bit and let this let this cook while we look at this delicious cookbook all right so see how it's broken up you have like one large section and then it's broken down into oh here are some fritters fruit fritters 
black eyed pea fritters, soups and salads. Oh, this one, this is the other thing that I thought maybe I was going to make. Um, corn and potato chowder with crab. Look at how good that looks. That's, I mean, that looks scrumptious. <laughs> and again, the author also gives recipes for the stocks that she calls for in her recipes as well. Um, if you want to make your own. Okra gumbo. Broccoli and cauliflower salad. Wilted mixed greens with bacon. I mean, there's just some good stuff in here. There are some rice dishes. Oh, there's a really good looking jambalaya recipe in here too. Look at that. I mean, that looks, that looks good. Um, which if you don't know, jambalaya has uh, andouille sausage, ham, chicken. I mean, it's, and shrimp, so. It's basically everything you'd ever want. Of course, baked macaroni and cheese is in here. Um, if I were eating wheat and cheese right now, I would have made this recipe. How many recipes for macaroni and cheese are we going to try on book cooks? A whole lot, apparently. This is also a recipe that's definitely different than any of the ones that I've ever tried before. Um, again, sorry, it's backwards, but apparently I can't switch that around right now. Um, it calls for eggs, evaporated milk, and sour cream. Um, I've never made a macaroni and cheese with these, uh, ingredients, but I mean, it doesn't, it looks pretty good, right? So I may have to save this recipe and try it, uh, someday. Vegetables, string beans, braised celery, something I never, ever thought of, but there we go. Roots and tubers mashed turnips and carrots with rum. Like, how's that for a side dish, right? Um, and then I'm going to skip ahead to the dessert section because that's that's what I do here. Um, sweet potato and mango cake. That looks pretty amazing. Um, some spice cakes. This caramel cake. Pineapple upside down cake which I totally, um, my parents have a lot of figs right now, and I believe my mom turned most of them into jam, and I was going to say that we could also make an upside-down cake, and you just swap out the pineapple for uh, figs. Uh, but they got a lot of figs all of a sudden. Let's see, what kind of cake is that? I don't know, but that looks good. That is the coconut lemon layer cake. Lemon tea cake. All right, where is it? There was a good one. There we go. Devil's food cake. Look at that. Look at that. Amazing. All right, so we're gonna, this is still cooking. All right, we're getting all crazy here today. That's the other side of my kitchen. Welcome to the other side of my kitchen. And we're gonna flip this around. There we go. We're gonna try to put this tripod back up here. Okay. So that's just kind of like a little in-depth tour of this particular cookbook. Um, oh, now we're in a weird spot. There we go. Okay. Uh, it really, I mean, the recipes really just seem so delicious and flavorful. And I love it when there's a little bit of history to the recipes as well. I love learning about um, the food that we eat. Let's see, like for this devil's food cake. Uh, for generations, chocolate was a luxury food item that families stretched their budgets to afford, making its presence on our tables an expression of affluence. This must be why we all feel like chocolate cake is so special, because chocolate is amazing. Um, chocolate potato cake is an heirloom recipe popular among early 20th century cooks from Kentucky to California. Um, this one doesn't call for any potatoes. Uh, and then uh, let's go back to our recipe and see what's in there for our recipe. It smells good in here. Let's go back. Where was it? I don't even remember. Quick breads. Oh, there are quick breads in here. Spoon bread. There's cornbread. Cornmeal griddle cakes. Buttermilk cornbread. I mean, I love cornbread, actually. Um... So all of this sounds really good to me. 
Also those orange biscuits before, I'm, I really like um, orange flavored things, so I feel like that would be good. There's a chicken pot pie recipe in here, stewed chicken, pork chops. There are some really good um, lamb recipes in here that look absolutely amazing. I mean, food photographers, they were the lamb curry and braised lamb shakes with a peanut sauce. That sounds amazing. I mean, the pictures in this cookbook also. Kudos to this food photographer, right? Um, there's a whole section on greens. Where's our recipe? Do, do, do. I didn't bookmark it because that was silly of me, of course. Why would I bookmark it? Why would I bookmark it? That's foolish. Oh, here. Peanut soup was on the next page, and that sounds pretty amazing. It's just butter, onion, garlic, all-purpose flour, peanut butter, chicken stock, heavy whipping cream, salt, pepper, hot pepper sauce, and some crush, crushed roasted peanuts for garnish. Um, I feel like that'd be so heavy, but at the same time, imagine stirring some veggies into that. I mean, that sounds great. Okay, so let me give this a little stir. Bisque means thick soup in French. Yes, it does. Um, over the years, our cooks used the term to refer to cream soup or cream of soup. Um, and they relied on various techniques to give the soup body, from egg yolks to a simple white sauce to the classic French mixture, bourmani, which is uh, rubbed butter, they call that. Anyway. Um, in 1932, a white author named Mary Moore Bremer featured crayfish soup in her collection of proven recipes of New Orleans' most favorite dishes. A black cook in a bandana graced the cover of the Spiral Bound collection. Inside, Bremer explained that the cooking of the region owed its allure to the flavors of France, Spain, and Italy, and the fact that the Negro woman who reigned in the kitchen had, her, had inherited from her ancestors in Africa as well as in America knowledge of herbs that made her skill look like magic. The essence of that kitchen prowess isn't wizardry. It's more likely a lifetime of hard work, skills learned, and the usage of the holy trinity mixture of onion, bright green bell pepper, and crisp celery. Um, so it's interesting to learn like where recipes come from. Like who, who do we attribute these recipes to? Um, who made it most famous? And what is often uh, the deeper story behind things? It's a, little, it's a little easier for us to research things nowadays um, even though some things may be lost, um, you know, research is its own field nowadays. Um, my eyes are still watering from cutting the onions. <sighs> Every now and then I get like a whiff of, because I put the root, the root is in the garbage, like right behind me. And every now and then I get like a whiff of the root. And, uh, it's funny because my cat will not come into the kitchen. Um, if, if, um... If I'm cutting onions, she steers clear from this kitchen. Uh, she's like deeply offended. <laughs> um, so the next thing that needs to happen um, is for the soup to thicken, which it is starting to. You can actually see the bubbles are getting thicker. And then what happens is actually you're supposed to remove the soup from the heat and blend it so it becomes smooth. Um, so you don't have these chunks of onions and whatnot. Um, you, you blend it without the bay leaf, remember that. <laughs> then we are going to add in our shrimp tails and half and half, I'm not using half and half, I'm using the thickened part from uh, a can of coconut milk. And uh, let that simmer again. I don't think I'm gonna blend, you're just supposed to blend to help with, um, you know, instead of having like these chunks of veggies in here. Um, you know, you can see the chunks of the onion and the bell pepper and whatever. And I'm sure it will, you blend it, it'll give it a more uniform flavor. It'll give it a really good flavor. Um, I don't feel like blending it today. Um, of course, if you have an immersion blender that actually solves your problem and makes it really, really easy, um, and you just stick it right in there, you could use an immersion blender if you have one, um, which I didn't think of. I didn't think of doing that. Um, so I'm just going to let this go for another... 
that like minute or two in the time that it takes for me to get my can of coconut milk. So yeah, we're gonna skip blending it today, but the original recipe and the recipe that I have on our website calls for you to blend it once everything is um, softened and thickened. And yeah, this is definitely thickening up. I wonder if this is as thick as if I had made it with a real flour roux. But I mean, the bubbles are definitely um, like a different consistency than they were. So I'm gonna go get my can of coconut milk, which is in the fridge. I'll be right back. shrimp <laughs> all right so I have my can of coconut milk which I'm just gonna pop the tab on this buddy I mean of course coconut and coconut milk entirely different creature than um, real milk and half and half um, because it's it's really just coconut fat and oil uh, so it's a little different but if you put your coconut, uh, your canned coconut milk in the fridge, you get this hard layer on top. And that's the cream that, especially in a lot of dairy-free recipes, they call for just this cream on the top and not any liquid that may be on the bottom. So, um, trying to add the pop to and have this in there. All right, well, I'm gonna take my bay leaf out. That's the important thing. I'm gonna take that out before I do this. Oh yeah, all right, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Come here, Bayleaf. Come here, buddy. I'm sorry you can't stay in the party. Anyway, yeah, so like for the purposes of TV, we are doing this pretty quickly and we're not blending it, but it smells really good in here, so I'll take it. Oh. My eyes are gonna water again because I just went near the garbage, okay. Stir this up again. It's definitely, oh, it's definitely getting nice and thick. Oh, wow. I feel like in the, just the last minute, it's changed. I don't know if you could see in the bubbles. It's totally changed. Oh, wow, that's nice. So, yeah, if, if you did blend it, it would be nice and smooth, and the consistency would be even thicker and just really rich. But that's not what we're doing today. All right, so now i got to get this coconut cream here. Without making a mess. Like, I can get it. It's just the mess part that is the question. Come on, come on. I'm trying to break it up a little. There we go. Okay. I don't know why you're still getting stuck in this can here, but that's not how we're playing today. Right. The things that I say and do while I'm cooking. Um, there's more in here. There's a nice big, there we go. Nice big chunk of coconut cream right there. I'll fish some more out from here. Again, I don't really want to add the liquid, but this nice thick cream and fat, that's what we're looking for. But again, you're probably just going to use half and half, which is easier. All right, I think I got all the good stuff out. Okay, and now let me get my shrimp. So as I said, these are already defrosted. They're clean, peeled, so nice and easy. I'm gonna put them right in here so that they start to um, not only release their flavors, but take on the flavors of the spices and everything that we put into this soup. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna stir this all around. It's gonna have to come back up to heat again. Uh, it says simmer for another 15 minutes. That way, the uh, whatever your cream of choices, whether it's dairy or coconut, 
has its chance to incorporate and thicken and the shrimp will heat up your shrimp or crawfish will heat up and then like i said take on those amazing flavors so but yeah it needs to come back up to temperature because we just added a bunch of stuff in there right okay this smells very good okay so we're gonna let this come back up grab some bubbles and then uh we get to taste it and adjust the seasoning so um, and then to serve it, you can put a little fresh parsley on top, it says. Mary's really good with the flavors that are in here. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm just waiting for it to bubble again. <laughs> I remember like way back the very first time I did cookbook, uh, book cooks, I already had like the oven, the oven full of muffins that I had made previously like in a cooking show where they're like well I happen to have some already made sometimes I wish I could do that for some of these other recipes because <laughs> I don't want to disappoint uh, so I'm gonna get a spoon so I can taste this there are some bubbles rising to the top so we're getting there smells good looks good I'm gonna give it a taste and see if I need more seasoning usually it's a little extra salt or something very hot very very hot mmm some dripped on my hand oh my gosh that's good definitely has heat definitely has heat definitely needs salt Definitely need salt. Wow, that is good. That is, I mean, you know, like I said, it's getting nice and chilly out at night, and it just a nice big pot of of this with all of the warm, hot flavors, and it's just got such a nice, smooth texture. I mean, that's that's good. Definitely has a kick to it, right? I mean, it is cayenne and paprika, but it's not, it's not so hot like, you know, when you're eating those, like, or if you've seen on TV, I don't know if any of you actually have been eating the, um, you know, the wings that are so spicy, sometimes they make you, like, sign a contract or something. It's not so hot that you can't taste the flavor. It is the flavor of the heat and of those um, herbs and spices. I'm gonna taste it again. All right, let's see. Oh, better. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Wow. Wow. It is so smooth. Um, from whatever cream you're adding in there and the roux like it's not thick like a roux like a bechamel or in like the macaroni and cheese or anything it just makes it so smooth it's delicious all right so I'm going to say that that's probably it for today I'm gonna let this finish simmering down for my lunch but that's that's it. That is our um, crawfish <laughs> bisque. Or if you're like me, you can adapt that to um, shrimp bisque. It is really delicious. It is really smooth. And I hope that some of you will enjoy it uh, on our cold nights that we have coming up. Snuggle up on the couch, watch some TV, have a nice big bowl of this. Um, I can't see that going wrong. So the recipe is still on our website. Um, next week we are going to uh, go back to one of my favorite cookbooks. If you have seen 
uh, book hooks during stay, stay at home orders. I used uh, Michelle Tam's both of her cookbooks several times. So good. We're going to make a beef and asparagus stir fry. Is that the one that I have bookmarked? Yes. Look at that. Look at that. Quick, easy, delicious. I love this cookbook. I love Michelle Tam's cookbooks and super, super healthy, uh, which is probably why I keep going back to them because not only are they incredibly healthy, but they are very, very flavorful and delicious. So that's what we're going to do next week. This recipe will be up on our website later today. And um, yeah, so until then, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your afternoon. I hope you get to eat something delicious. And if you give this recipe a try, let me know. All right. Bye, everyone.